Hello, everybody, wherever you may be, from coast to coast and sea to shining sea, welcome back to the World's Radio Show. This is Ham Radio Live. Thank you so much for coming, wherever you're coming from around the world today. It's a very special day. We've got a lot of news going on right now that's affecting the ham bands. Happy Sunday, July 18th, 2021, to the world. I hope you enjoy this show. There's a lot of history here and an awful lot of information. So thank you for coming wherever you're coming from. I also have some special news and thanks. And gosh, today's been just such a special day. It truly has. Thank you very much for coming to the show today, wherever you may be. Hi, everybody. Welcome back to the Shack in Oregon. I know it's a weird time, right? It's like we're never on the middle of the night. Now we are. And there's a reason for that. There's a very special thing going on that most of you know, some might not, on 40 meters right now. And that happens to be some jamming going on. It's different, and it's definitely there. I'm going to talk to you a lot about not only the history of jamming the HF bands, but also for sure where this is coming from. And I hope you like the show. This is just dedicated to what's happening. I'll help you out along the way with some other news, too. First of all, in the house, welcome to my brother, Bob, courtesy of WIFI. Hi, Bob. Welcome. Martin, you aren't working the night shift now. It's the early shift. Welcome. Orlando, first timer. Welcome to the channel. Good to see you, Orlando. Hello. And my man. All the way in the German frontier himself. What's up, yo? From Germany, Gunter, DK5ONV, welcome. It's good to see you, buddy. Good to see you. All right, first of all, I want to thank a dear friend who became a dear friend today. This is Greg. His call sign is Kilo Alpha 7, Mike Delta Mike. He came over to my house today. You see my messy garage, but you see him working on the step by our urban beam to help me complete it because it's something I just can't do. My fingers go numb when I start to work on it because of the weight and the dimensions. He's just working his tail off. So Greg, thank you so much for coming out and doing what you did, man. Sorry I didn't have all the parts. Jeez. I really mean that, man. I'm sorry I didn't have all the parts for you, but you know what? I, I just, I wish I did. Thanks, man. All right. First of all, we want to welcome you and get you into ham radio. It's the main reason we come. If you'd like to get into amateur radio, there's lots of ways to do it. The American Radio Relay League can help you find them at www.arrl.org. Hit the contact us bar. They'll help you out. In Great Britain, the Radio Society of Great Britain can help you at www.rsgb.org. In Canada, the Radio Amateurs of Canada is at www.rac.ca. In Japan, the Japan Amateur Radio League is at www.jarl.org. In Australia, where our mates are, and we love them to pieces. <laughs> Contact the Wireless Institute of Australia at www.wia.org. If you want to email the show, please do so. Find me at cqhamradiolive at gmail.com. I have an email to read you here in just a few moments that really touched my heart. And it's really part of the reason why I came tonight. If you'd like to help support the channel, keep us going and help us to be able to keep paying for stuff that needs to be fixed, please feel free. Our mission is to help people get an amateur radio, get licensed. You can help us do it at PayPal right there at proverbs356 at me.com. Also have a Patreon page. You can find me there at Ham Radio Live. Welcome to the show, everybody. I want to take a moment to thank somebody who really sent me a heck of a letter. And I want to give it really, you know, its proper due. This is Mike. Mike's call sign is Kilo Fox 5, India November Tango. He wrote me, and I want to read this to you. He asked me, he said, Larry, could you give me your address? I just discovered you while doing general upgrade studying. I recently had a stroke and was in a coma for a month on life support. I found myself struggling and I found your videos, and they seem to be helping with my short-term memory loss. I primarily use ham radio to help me in the past with my disaster response and community events, but now, in a wheelchair, my disaster work is probably over now. 
It will be more hobby and relaxing, I guess. Anyway, I just want to send you a small gift of things I used to sell on eBay to help offset my expenses. Thanks, Mike. Kilo India, sorry, Kilo Fox 5 India, November Tango. He says um, he bought a, an old ambulance to make it into a ambulance, but now it's all gone due to his health conditions. Um, Mike, I want to encourage you to keep fighting to get better and to know that we're praying for you and wishing you all the best. Man. Okay. Thanks for just a heartwarming letter. Seriously, the show's dedicated to you. So I hope it's something that you really, really enjoy. Thank you so much. Family doing good. Miley is right behind me. You can see her laying there in the bed. If you look real careful, she is right back there, curled up into a little ball. So yeah, that's where Miley's at. Anyway, so we've got a really fun show for you today. I'm so excited to bring this to you because there is so many elements involved in jamming. I don't know if you know that or not. Jamming began back in 1948. It began with Russia. I don't know if you know that. The Russians began it. And it started really being worked out in Czechoslovakia. Once Czechoslovakia became a communist country within the Eastern Bloc. Well, as people found out how to, you know, manipulate the HF bands, what happened was we ended up getting some pretty heavy things happening on not only shortwave, but also the ham bands, which has been just phenomenal. If you've heard, if you had a chance to hear Anything on 40 meters lately, you know. 40 meters is completely different than it was just about a week ago. Last Saturday, a week ago today, there was a problem in Cuba. We all know about that, right? Well, unfortunately, the folks in Cuba have had their say. They want to be able to have some help. And the government, unfortunately, I guess, is not willing to do so. So they are protesting. And in their country, unfortunately, that's not allowed. Well, what Cuba has done is Cuba has actually taken their, I guess, their strength and taken it away from the people. Now, the sad part is that the people have no way to speak out. Cuba took down the internet on Sunday of last week to Cubans on the island. They then started jamming ham radio bands. And the jamming is in different places. I'll show you how we know it comes from Cuba. I'll show you how you can check it yourself from a simple place on your phone. And I'll also talk to you a little bit about the history of jamming and why it's been done. First of all, it takes giant tower, typically more than one. Many times there will be directionals involved here. Now, this is a picture of a, a tower in Russia that was used to jam Voice of America and Radio Free Europe signals for years. Currently, as of right now, 7.107 megahertz, 7.152 megs, 7.158 megahertz, 7.166 megahertz, and 7.179 megahertz are being jammed. Earlier today, they were jamming nearly every 5 megahertz in the 40-meter voice motion from 7.107 to 7.167. It was absolutely incredible to see what the bands looked like. I'll give you a picture. I'll let you see exactly what the bands did look like so you have an idea of just how significant this was. And I know people have been talking about that. I think for me, and, and I know Martin, Pop Echo 9, Tango in the Gulf, you're not hearing it so much there, but they are in Great Britain. And, you know, Gunter, yes, Kiwi STR, great way to localize it. You could triangulate signals through Kiwi. We'll show you how you do it. And we'll show you how you can also do it from the ease of your phone. How's that for pretty cool, right? So we're going to show you how you can do that tonight. And we're going to show you actually, you know, the proof that this is actually from Cuba, yeah, unfortunately. And it's, it's, it, the reason I say unfortunately is because it's too bad we're still in a world that kind of goes back to 1958. It really is. 
Let's take a look real quick. Shortwave, still alive and still being jammed. Here's shortwave in South Korea. There's the jamming signal. And that's jamming signals coming into North Korea from the south. He'll change frequencies and he'll show different areas where they're doing the same thing. But you get it. They're jamming different frequencies. It's been done for years. In fact, again, since 1948. Here's another one. And this is typical from Cuba, usually Radio Marti out of South Florida is jammed. Here is a little bit of what that sounds like. Some sort of jamming, maybe. Not sure. Take a listen to it and tell me what you think. I can't hear who the station is underneath the jammer. But go ahead and listen and see what you think. Frequency 9935. Of course, you can hear the disturbance in there. You can see the needle's not moving whatsoever. It has just a single, you know, signal on. That's jamming. That's the way it works. It's usually a different noise. Now, years ago, we've showed it, in fact, we had a show a few, well, probably about three or four weeks ago, talk about the Russian woodpecker, how it was built, how it looks, how literally 25% of the power from the Chernobyl nuclear power plant powered up the big giant array antenna that was located there in Western Russia that was known as the Russian woodpecker. So I kind of almost consider this to be the Cuban mosquito. It kind of sounds that way, but let's take a quick look and we'll give you a couple more examples. Hams can also do this to each other, but this is called QRM. It's also illegal. And I apologize for the language here. If there's any kids that might be watching this and parents around, now's a good time to pull them away for just a few moments, okay? Okay, so there's a ham using foul language, and there's another ham that's playing music. Both, in this case, obviously are wrong, right? That's the way it is. Take a look at another QRM example on, you know, 75 meters again of the same thing happening. Again, this is on the ham bands from last December, okay? <laughs> Morning, Kev. So, good example of QRM or intentional jamming being done. You got to be careful because the amateur auxiliary is finding people who do that. And I'm going to show tonight a way that you can triangulate those signals. I think you'll like it. I do want to thank, though, Josh at Hemp Radio Crash Course, KI6NAZ. By the way, today, Josh got his 200,000th subscriber. Isn't that amazing? Josh, congratulations, man. That's an accomplishment right there. 200,000 subscribers. Wow. Congratulations to you, Josh. It's really cool. All right. Before we do that, and thank you, Josh, letting us take a look at that video and show it on this show. I'd like to show you a video of a man who's personally been hurt by all this jamming. He has a lot of friends in Cuba, and he was involved right when the jamming started. This is a guy that's a ham. And I can tell you, I have a friend in Cuba named Pedro. People are people. They want to be liked. They want to have friendships. They care about each other, no matter what country they're in. I think Pedro's one of the coolest people in the world. Here's a man who talks to a lot of people in Cuba regularly that this has really affected. His call sign, Whiskey 7, Hotel Uniform. Okay, guys, this is W7 Hotel United. 
in this uh, moment I want uh, to show you how the um, the Cuban government is interfering and scamming the 40 meter band to prevent the Cuban people who listen the um, people from the United States people from the free country telling them the uh, the news because they cut off the internet in Cuba and see how they jam in the frequency uh, as you see there all of these signals here are interference for the people on this part of the band is when uh, the band that the Cuban people used to they making that uh, interfering there to stop them to talk in between them and and do updates I'm gonna show you how that sounds now this was four days ago okay four days ago this is what the 40 meter band looked like in 130 that was the first frequency that we use that was the first frequency that we used to uh talk on sunday when we heard the news that the cuban people went out to the street that's 140 which is also another frequency that we use 150 165 and 170 are also with interference and that is a uh, non-stop since Sunday uh, when we start talking and telling the Cuban people what's going on guys uh, share this video and the world has to know the world have to know how bad is the Cuban government that they don't allow any information for the Cuban people God bless the Cuban people and please share this is that something there's a guy who has a lot of friends in Cuba who now cannot even speak with them because of all the jamming. And you might be asking, okay, well, you know, it's just jamming. Could come from anywhere. Venezuela could come from Cuba, might come from some boat out there. Josh, KI6NEZ did a great video on this. And I'd like to play it. I'd like to thank Josh at Ham Radio Crash Course for giving me permission to do so. By the way, Josh, again, congratulations on your 200,000 subscribers today. That's pretty cool stuff. How's it going, everybody? I am Josh, KI6NAZ, and we're listening to affectionately what we're now calling the Cuban Rum Runner, which is basically a, a, a mock name of what was called the Russian Woodpecker back in the day, which was a signal that was designed specifically to screw and mess with the amateur radio bands. What's this all about? We're going to talk about it right now on the Ham Radio Crash Course. So starting this past weekend, protests kicked off in Cuba. There are people that are very upset about the support that the government is giving them. Now, I'm not going to get political about this, but something that's been happening and, and been ongoing is that amateur radio operators get on 40 meters and they talk to Cuban Americans and, and other people in America, and they've been talking about the government. Well, somebody doesn't like this, and they've been creating this pretty strong interference. Right now, it's, it's over S9, and I actually have... Um, RF gain turned on to, to bring some attenuation into this to, to lower the signal strength. But but you can see it's very pronounced, these vertical lines. And it covers a lot of the extra portion of 40 meters. I won't assume politically what's going on, but the assumption, at least from the people that have reached out to me, Cuban Americans in Miami and other places in the States, have reached out saying, this is the Cuban government, and they're specifically creating this jamming with very, very powerful transmitters to prevent Cuban nationals from talking outside of the country. So much so that these slices here that you can see, they seem to be frequency agile and they will actually move these little jamming slices over transmitters in Cuba. So anybody who gets on their transmitter and starts talking to people in the States, for instance, they'll move the jamming right on top of it to prevent them from communicating. And it, it does. It's extremely powerful, and it's very hard to copy anything. Well, I was interested in where this noise was coming from, and today I'm going to show you how to do it. 
So here is Kiwi SDR. It's an SDR that we've talked about in the past. This is a web-enabled SDR, and there are SDRs like this all over the world. What's really cool about Kiwi SDR is we can use something, an algorithm that uh, was created, I think, in the community or actually within the company called TDOA. And it allows us to select up to seven SDR receivers to do direction finding. Yeah, triangulation of RF via the SDRs looking at a particular frequency. In this case, I'm looking at 7.136 megahertz on lower sideband. You can actually see as, as I've been recording, the intensity of these slices is getting stronger. The red is showing you points of high intensity. Well, let's flip it over to TDOA. I'll show you how to use it and to select other SDRs that you can use to triangulate the location of where the signal is coming from. So here's a really good uh, CMDX group in Brazil. This is a really good SDR. So if you're interested in uh, trying this out for yourself, you might want to start with this group and just bring up the frequency, which is uh, 7.136. And we're going to go to TDOA on the right-hand side. Now we just need to pick other SDRs that we want to use. I'm going to go ahead and mute this so I don't drive myself crazy because it's, it's quite annoying. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and pick the uh, Bon Air station, which I know can can get it really well. It also hears very loudly. We're going to pick uh, this station N5FOG. We're going to go to Virginia, and we're going to pick KT4RS. We're going to go up to Ohio, around Ohio, and there is an AN80MD. Uh, over around in the New York area. Where is it? KF2DA. All right, so that's good enough to get started. We're going to click left button that says submit, lower left-hand corner. Sample, sample, sample. It's capturing the uh, I.O. data, basically, that's coming off of the SDRs. It's going to take a long audio sample, and then it's going to run a processing algorithm against it. Now, I picked the Brazil station first. I've had a quirky time with this Brazil station. If I just add it as another station that can hear like on the, the left hand side list. So you may want to start with the Brazil station, run the processing. It's probably going to work better for you. And the algorithm is running for TDOA. Sometimes you'll get a false positive. So I'm going to drop this EN80. It's been kind of giving me uh, an issue. All right, so running the sample on N5FOG, TWR Bonaire, KF2DA, KT4RS, and we're obviously running out of this Brazil station for the direction finding. And there you go. It, so it, it displays where it thinks the intensities are on the signal. And you can see it's most intense <laughs> right by Cuba, oddly enough. So some um, geographic things are going to affect it possibly in terms of its running its algorithm and as the bands change that will also affect it most likely looking at other images i've seen that it it definitely is most likely in and around that area likely very much uh, outside of cuba and you can see where we're right in there where exactly is it i don't know right these are sdrs that are separated by thousands of miles or over a thousand miles in some cases is this a method for determining where something is coming from absolutely and you can see actually my waterfall has changed just in my process of of making this video where s9 on my receive loop over s9 on my step ir running uh, the 40 meter dipole this is a fantastic thing to use if you are just interested in where a signal may be coming from. You can use this for number stations. You can use this for your favorite radio stations. You just have to know the frequency and use the SDRs to do that. Links are in the description so you can try out Kiwi SDR on your own. Highly recommended. Maybe even buy one yourself and set up a cool receiving station so that you can be a part of this TDOA direction finding algorithm thing that hams and anyone else can use for that matter again uh, sdrs are a great device for those that are getting interested in ham radio you're going to find a ton of fun getting out on them and listening for what's on the air so i hope you enjoyed this video i hope you found it interesting maybe even helpful if you did give me a thumbs up i would appreciate it i'm josh ki6naz you've been watching the ham radio crash course and i'll talk to you later see ya isn't that great josh by the way congratulations again Two hundred thousand subscribers wow Good job, man. Good job. You know what's funny is that I use Kiwi every day. I use it for the noise floor information from around the world. It helps me to understand to tell you what the noise floors are. I didn't know about TDOA. Now, here's a little tip. 
I'm going to show you that you can use this from the comfort of your phone. This is cool because you actually can. I don't know if you know this. You can actually use it for your phone. I'm going to go step by step to show you real quick. Now, before I do that, let me show you last night. Look at all the interference. Listen to it. It's literally going on every 10 megahertz. This was last night, and this was actually coming out of the U.S. So this is coming out of the two district of the U.S. So that's what it was last night. Now, they've moved their higher power transmitters, or more directional, I should say. Those are right now running at the 7.1 six one i believe frequency in fact i give you the exact frequencies because i checked them the problem is that they move them they typically move them uh, they were from 7.107 to 7.167 yesterday uh, and then tonight these are the frequencies are on 7.107 7.152 7.158 7.159 and all the way up at 7.179. So they are literally chasing and making sure that people do not get out. How about using something as simple maybe as your cell phone? Let me show you how you do the same thing. So here's Kiwi on a cell phone, all right? And what I'm using this out of, just to give you a good idea, we're starting out of Galveston, Texas, okay? You see on the top it says Gulf Coast of Texas, so that's the primary SDR, okay? From here, you press TDOA, where it says extension, and then you select a, an SDR, really. There's just a whole bunch of call signs. But be careful, don't pick the time stations. <laughs> don't pick CHU or WWV or any of that, okay? So this is a good way to triangulate QRM or jamming for any station. So now I've added the Bonaire station in the Caribbean. I'll add one more and then I'll triangulate. So I want three. I'll pick the third one and I'm picking it up out of the Midwest. So I've got one now in the state of Colorado. I've got one in the Caribbean. I have one in the two district. And I also have the one that's running in South Texas. I had to think for a moment, sorry, <laughs> out of Galveston. So it's going to start sampling. It takes a while. This doesn't, this doesn't happen right away. You'll see it saying sampling started. Sometimes it might say you need to zoom in. That means you need to shorten your search up a little bit. Don't go so far away. So it will then start to do its magic and the algorithm will come on. Then once that happens, it's going to show you where it's going. Look at that. See? And, and this was today, actually early tonight. You see it's about 6.28 p.m. But look at the signals. It's coming right out of Cuba. We'll zoom in on it here at the end and you'll see how close it gets in. But look at the distance that this thing covers. These are very high power transmitters and extremely strong antennas, see? There's the red. That's where that's coming from. All right. So let's change frequency. We'll move a little bit and try one more. And I'll show you again, step by step, how to use your phone to do the exact same thing. This is great for checking maybe number stations or perhaps if somebody you hear on a frequency is causing a lot of trouble, triangulate the signal. You can find out where they're at. Let's take one more look at Cuba and the Cuban mosquito, as I call it, because it sounds like a mosquito buzzing, right? Let's take a look at it. So now we're all the way down at 7.105. Now in the US, this is off the band plan. However, keep in mind, Cuba is has never signed on on the ITU. They've never signed a, as being a part of the International Telecommunications Union. They're not a signee on it, so they just don't care. 
they can broadcast wherever they want, they feel. So I'll pick another three stations again, and we're going to triangulate 7.105. So I have one in Colorado, one out of Galveston, Texas, and I'll pull one out of the East Coast as well. And we'll triangulate everything, and we'll see where we get. Let's see where the signal is coming from here. Again, we're at 7.105 megahertz now. We were quite a bit higher in the earlier one we just showed you. And thank you, Dragon. That's very kind. You made my night, man. Thank you so much for that. And there they are. Look at that. And there it is coming literally, and it'll zoom in right on Havana. Look at that. See? It's all coming in from the Cuban island right there. And when you zoom in on the red, and you zoom real tight in that scene, you'll see that the the majority of all of that is coming directly from Havana. Here we go. We'll go in close, and you'll be able to see the exact location of this. It's just unfortunate, but this is the power of your cell phone. This is what you can do with it to get you know, information just like this. So you can direction find just about any station you want that's finding, you know, causing QRM, or maybe they're, you know, just causing some trouble on the ham bench. You can triangulate them this way. And Martin, yes, I absolutely will put up that link for you. That's not a problem. Sure. It's good. It's Kiwi SDR, and I'll make sure that the link is in the description, as well as Josh's video. And as well, I, I can't forget, because it was such a special thing to hear W7HU's plea to please, you know, just just keep trying, you know, to get a hold of the Cuban people to pray for them. So it's a tough time. Radio jamming, like I say, has been around since 1948. That's when it started. It's a relic of the Cold War. Unfortunately, it still exists. It's a way of silencing people, and it's being used right now. It's tough. I'd ask you to please keep the Cuban people in their prayer, in your prayers. You know, people want to be happy, you know, wherever they are. They just want to be happy. And when they're not happy and they come together and say they're not happy, they should at least be able to have a voice to say so. I thank you. But before I go, I want you to see how far this QRM is going. It might surprise you. Now, it's very light. I, I want to tell you, if I show you my, let's go to my rig real quick and you won't see it. You won't on my, and I'm using the DX commander vertical here. I'm not using, I'm just not getting it. Okay. I'm not getting anything here at all. Okay. And, and I, you know, I guess I'm seeing a little bit of intensity in the places, but I'm not really hearing it or seeing it on my rig. However, go to Hawaii. Look at this. Listen carefully. This is one of the most powerful of the transmitters they're using right now at You see me changing frequencies because these are frequencies that these folks are at. That's why. If you listen carefully and watch the S meter, it barely ticks up. So this this noise, the, I call it the Cuban mosquito, because it goes buzz, buzz, buzz. Anyway, it can be heard all the way to the Hawaiian Islands at night. So anyway, that's it. I want to let you know what is going on 40 meters. 
it does move. The frequencies do change. I mean, I don't know if maybe they have a monitor in country that's listening for people to pick up their radios and try and make calls out. I don't know. But it does move. The frequencies change quite a bit. Yesterday, it was literally every 10 kilohertz from 7.105 to about 7.170. About 7.172 is when you finally escape the noise from it. So, yeah, it changes every day. Anyway, that's it. A little story about jamming, the history of it, and the unfortunate fact it's still being used. Have a special sign up today. It's in honor of Josh and his 200,000th subscriber today. As many of you know, Josh lives in Southern California. So we've got a Southern California sign off for him. I want to wish Mike the very best. Thank you for sending me a letter that really warmed my heart and helped me understand that, you know, my problems aren't so big after all. Mike, you're in my prayers. To the rest of you, God bless you. And thank you for watching Ham Radio Live. We'll see you in uh, hopefully a, a couple of days. I've got a lot of things going on with the family that are, Bob's got a few more things going on, but we'll get through it together. And we'll be back with a great show about meteor scatter. Should be fun. Until then, thanks for watching Ham Radio Live. My name's Larry and my call sign's Kilo 7 Hotel November. Special thanks to Josh at Ham Radio Cram Crash Course for giving us a shot at a great video he did on direction finding and the source of the Cuban mosquito. Until next time. Bye, everybody. At this time, KHJ TV ends its broadcast day. KHJ TV Los Angeles is owned and operated by RKO General Incorporated, with studios located at 5515 Melrose Avenue in Hollywood, transmitter located atop Mount Wilson. KHJ TV operates on Channel 9 by authority of the Federal Communications Commission in Washington, D.C. Throughout the broadcast day, some of the programs on Channel 9 are reproduced by means of film and videotape. This is one of the most beautiful sign-offs I have ever heard. I hope you enjoy it. This is the late Ray Charles. Yeah.
Until next time, goodbye, everybody.